Hey, this is Uncle Lyant with a Dark Radiant tutorial video. Uh, we're going to be working with some brush work today. Um, primary reason we want to work with brushes first things first is they're the primary building blocks that you do just about anything in Dark Radiant. Uh, they seal against the void. Um, anything that you make that's going to be walls, ceilings, floors, anything that needs to separate areas from each other so that everything doesn't render at the same time, you're going to want to use brushes. However, uh, there is a tendency to just drag out some brushes and make some rectangles and make rectangular rooms connected to rectangular hallways, connected to blocky stairways, connected to blocky oceans. Um, so I want to show you some ways that you can manipulate brushes to make some interesting shapes that isn't terribly inefficient. Um, it's not too bad once you get used to working with it, so we're going to work with some of the tools and techniques that you can make some interesting stuff. So uh, the purpose of this tutorial here today is to show you how to make a cylindrical tower with a conical roof. It's going to be hollow on the inside, and the inside of the tower is going to seal against the outside of the tower. Uh, so with that being said, First thing we're going to do is we are going to create a uh, just a, a regular brush. Anytime that you drag out a brush with your mouse anywhere in one of your ortho views in Dark Radiant, it's going to just create a cube. Um, <clears throat> so first thing you got to know about that is you need to set a grid size. The grid size is the basic smallest possible unit that you can manipulate things with in Dark Radiant. Uh, right now you can see that it's set to 32, 96 to 128. That is the smallest units, grid unit size that I can drag out. So uh, I am going to make a 1024 by 1024 by 1536 block. We'll drag that out right around the origin. That's that. And then we can resize it using this resize tool. So if you drag the outside of a brush while it's selected, you know it's selected because it's highlighted in red, um, just click it and drag it. You can resize it that way. If you click inside of the brush and drag it, it'll move it, but we don't want to do that. Uh, we just want to make it 1536. There we go. And we've got a big old block tower. All right, so this is your basic building shape. In most dark mod missions, there's a big square, and it's a building, and it's got some windows, and there might seem to be some fancy looking trim with patches, but mm, still most people will use big blocky stuff for dark mod for the, for the most part. So we're gonna make a big building that's actually a prism. We're gonna make it a 12-sided prism. Here's the number of sides that I'm going to make it. It's going to be 12. Click OK, and we did it wrong. <laughs> now, the reason that we did it wrong is um, the actual shape that you wanted, a 12-sided prism, it, the, the actual face of it is going to show up in the last ortho view that you had selected. So here I was obviously, the last place that I was working in was the, uh, the ZX ortho view. We want to be in the YX ortho view. That's your top down, where your Y is up, your X is right, so obviously your Z axis you're looking straight down at. So uh, that's what we want to do. So I'm going to come over here, select here, brush, prism, 12 sides. There it is. All right, so now we got a, a nice looking 12 sided little tower there. All right, so the important thing here to know is that this is just a solid block. I mean, the inside, there's, there's nothing. It's all solid. What we want to do is hollow it out. However, um, what you probably learned from the A to Z tutorial is, you know, most of the time when you hollow things out, you want to use the uh, the Make Room button, which in this case yields, ooh, yeah, not so much. Um, yeah, it's not going to work that way. So what I do is uh, I like to fool Dark Radiant into giving me what I want. So uh, the easiest way to do that is to do it yourself. So what we do is make a clone of this brush with the spacebar. And now I have a copy 
And then you can use your translate tool to move it around, which I'm, I'm not actually going to move it. I just want to show you that there is indeed a, uh, another copy here. And we want to resize this now. So the tool that I use to do that, to uh, manipulate the size of my brushes, if they're strangely shaped, is the rotate and scale tool, which when you open it up becomes the arbitrary transformation tool. It's two for the price of one, right? It's great. Okay, but the thing you got to know about the arbitrary transformation tool is it will not do what you want out of the box. I'll show you what, you, what I mean here. Um, so right here, this is going to raise and lower the scale on the x-axis by 4%. So, there we go. I'll do that a few times. And now it has turned my beautiful 12-sided brush tower into a rupee from The Legend of Zelda. Thank you, Dark Radiant. That's exactly what I wanted to do. So instead, what we're going to do is make it work properly. The way to do that is to go into your vert vertex mode by pressing the V key, also up here on this toolbar, and select, you know, use the shift button, hold on shift, and drag out and select all the vertices. And now it will work properly for every vertex that you have selected. So we'll go back here and we will create a wall that is, well, let's say, 12 to 16 units thick. We'll do that for the X and the Y direction because we want it to go up and down. Now I can tell when it's going to be 12 to 16 units thick because I can set my grid to, let's say, 8. So there, that's about mm, what's 16 plus 4 is 20. That's about 20 units thick. That's about good. So we'll leave that there. So now I've got the basic shape of the outs outer wall and the inner wall. That's pretty much what I want. You can see it here. But the problem with this right now is that our vertices are still woefully off the grid. I'll show you what, what I mean by that. I just selected a grid 1 by using the 1 shortcut key. And you can see that these are not on the grid. I mean, it's just not, it's, ugh, it's way out there. Um, anytime that you're working with brushes, you want to make sure that everything you got is going to be snapped to the grid. So <clears throat> I haven't snapped to the grid yet because I wanted to keep the, uh, the form factor as close as humanly possible when I created my clone and then resized it. But I'll give you an example of what I mean. When you snap to grid, the grid that it snaps to is the, um, the grid unit that you're currently using. So if I went to 128 and now I chose to snap to grid, well, I mean, it, it, it's kind of off. It's not quite its original shape. If I choose grid unit 1 and undo first, the snap to grid, it looks almost exactly the same. And so we'll do that for both of our towers. There. Now we have a neatly grid-aligned set of 12-sided towers. You can see they're right on the grid. Very nice. <clears throat> and what we're going to do is CSG subtract. And what that's going to do is it's going to delete the intersection of everything that's in that's touching well every brush that's touching or intersecting with the brush that's currently selected so I have the interior brush selected so everything in the second brush that intersects with in here is going to get deleted and what's going to be left is just this exterior wall so we'll go ahead and do that there that's a lot better than what happened the first time with the make room button. I mean, it's still a little bit splintered. Got some stuff we got to work with here, but it's much better. Now we don't need this interior block at all. That's that's just going to be em empty space. That's going to be the inside of our tower. So we don't need this anymore. But I'm going to save it because we still need this shape for later when we get to the roof. So I'm just going to minimize it for now. There, we don't need to look at that. All right. 
So now what we want to do is get the joints of this tower to look as they're supposed to. If you need to do work with it later, this is going to make it a total pain. So fortunately, we've already snapped our, uh, our vertices to grid, so it's going to be much easier to work with this with the clipper tool. The clipper tool is great. It is a wonderful thing. I'll show you what I mean. You take two points anywhere on your grid, and now it's going to carve up your brushes. So in this particular instance, this brush, this, this, this brush isn't going to be involved. This brush right here is going to get cut into two. It's going to leave us with uh, two pieces. And you do that by hitting Shift Enter. And now we have both pieces left. If I had, let's go back here, try that again. If I had just used a regular Enter key, one of these brush pieces is going to get lopped off. And the piece that gets lopped off is the piece that doesn't have the blue side on it. Uh, I'm sorry, that does have the blue side on it. So if I hit just a regular Enter key, it gets deleted. We don't want that though, we want to keep those pieces, so we're going to use Shift Enter. Also, if you want to know the, uh, the menu key for that, it is... Where is it? In the Clipper menu under Brushes, Clip Selection is Enter, Split Selection is Shift Enter. There you go. And if you want to change that uh, little blue side of which area gets deleted when you hit Enter, just hit Control Enter, and it'll flip it around. Now that's a blue side. Great. Okay, so Shift Enter to keep that. You can unselect our other brush. <clears throat> so now we've got two brushes, but we don't need this anymore. So what we want to do is get this merged with this. We, we want this to be one piece. That's what we want. Now, because both of these pieces together are seamless and they create a, uh, a convex shape, we can use CSG Merge and it will just automatically make our brush into one piece. So we're going to go around and we're going to do this for the whole tower and you're not going to want to sit around and watch that. So 